Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about landing those big commercial accounts, how to do it, what do you look for. I know we've chatted a bit about it in the past, but here's a new take on it, a few new ideas. So if you do commercial or you haven't done commercial work yet, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. Hey, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully, it does not suck, and uh, hopefully, you want to watch a bunch of other episodes because we got a bunch of other episodes. Uh, we've been doing this now for uh, almost four years, so it's like 190, almost 200 episodes of this show 30 minutes or more podcast comes out every single week on every platform possible for podcasts and of course youtube um if you are one of the cool kids there's the sticker uh, backwards in a camera so hard if you're a cool kid thank you it's because of you that i get to wear these crisp white shirts that have been given to me for free everybody's got to have wcr swag if you haven't already uh but Thank you so very much. I am a rep for windowcleaner.com, of course. So if you want supplies ordered, my number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. So call me, text me. My favorite thing is all you guys and gals who just send me a text and be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. And it doesn't cost you anything extra. I put the order in. I get credit. Virtual high five of awesomeness. And you have a rep, a dude. You got me, man. And uh, let me know. I'll throw you in a sticker. Of course you get the limited edition Cool Kid sticker because you're a cool kid. But there is another level above that. It is the epic Cool Kid. And if you are that, you uh, you watch every episode, thumbs up, of course, on YouTube. You comment. You put your orders in through me. Shameless plug. And more importantly, you subscribed to the American Window Cleaner magazine. Well, thank you. It's because of you that I get to do that. I decided to take on the American Window Cleaner magazine, uh, November actually of last year, just for something else to help you guys. Awesome articles, amazing pictures. It's so cool to have a cultural thing like a magazine. There's stickers in there. Of course, the sticker wall is getting giant. Um, there's stickers every month. You get a subscription to your door with a sticker sheet. Awesome articles, pictures, everything, whatever. And just another side note, if you want like cool swag, uh, let me know. Uh, we have it all available at awcmag.com. Uh, so it's awcmag.com. Go there, shop, do your thing. Anyway, uh, by the way, I want to give a couple quick shout outs because I forget every single week. It's always written down and I forget. Steve Donahue, what's going on, man? Uh, Matthew Clebeau, what's up? David Holden and Joe Salerno. Just a couple of the cool kids. If you didn't know, now you know, right? But today, we're talking about uh, bidding and winning commercial accounts. Why? Because this time of year is commercial season. This is when you're doing most of the commercial sales. As I'm changing this light so you guys don't see a shadow. Sorry. Guess I didn't prep very well. Uh, But now is the time of year that you are uh, selling the commercial work and you're doing the commercial work. And there's a few things. Commercial is not like anywhere. There's three types of window cleaning. There is residential. We call it resi. There's commercial, which is bigger stuff that is not done once a month or less. And then there's route, which is done once a month or less. Uh, Hopefully weekly if you're doing route. Those are usually smaller jobs. But I got some big route jobs. I know we all do. But commercial is those big mid-rise buildings, maybe a three-story office building, maybe it's a doctor's office, maybe it's a whatever, and they do it quarterly, or they do it even once every six months. Those are commercial jobs. Now, a commercial job is going to pay really well. It's a nice big building, and the best part about commercial, when you're doing the work, is it's commercial, easy, nice windows. They usually almost never have windows that can open. They're just big panes of glass, super easy. There's usually parking lots or sidewalks around the entire building. It just is an easy, easy job. But you have to sell it a certain way. You can't sell residential like commercial. You can't sell commercial like route. You can't do any of that back and forth. And let me just go over a few things you can't do in commercial. You cannot send them a postcard. 
You just can't. But that works on residential. You can't send a route a postcard because they don't care either, right? So there's just a few things like that that make commercial that much more specific. A little bit more, not tricky, I wouldn't say, but usually they take a little bit more chasing, a little bit more work. And there's a few things for that. I'm going to tell you the number one thing you have to do in commercial, in getting your bid through, but getting communication, really, which is key. The number one thing to do is to break through the gatekeeper. The gatekeeper is the assistant or secretary or front desk person or whatever. And their entire job is to stop people like us. We are spam. I know people need services and I know you along with a lot of others probably think that we're not spam. We're offering a a quality product service that's needed. Yeah, but we're selling it. It's spam. We're trying to sell it. We are salesmen. We're doing that, right? So there's already this stigma. Go, hey, uh, we do window cleaning. I'd love to give you a bid. No, no, we're not accepting bids right now. That's their job. Their entire job is to stop you from doing that. And if you don't believe me, walk into a place, go to the front desk and go, hey, I'm Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. I'd love to talk to somebody about doing the windows. See how quickly you get shut down. And it's not a bad thing. It shouldn't make you think you're any worth any less or that our job isn't important. But what it is, is their job to stop that. They're like the filter on an email. And the gatekeeper is the most important part of getting through. It's amazing. I have been doing this for 15 plus years. And it still amazes me when I talk to a gatekeeper and you're like, I, I literally could be talking to somebody on the phone or whatever, texting, whatever. I call him back. Oh, hey, I'm just calling to talk to Ed. Uh, we were just talking a minute ago. Who is this? I tell him who it is. They're like, oh, yeah, he's not here right now, uh, but I'll take a message and have him call. No, no, I was just talking to him. I know he's, yeah, he's not taking calls right now. He's in a meeting. The meeting was with me. I was just on the other line with him. We got disconnect. Like, it is amazing how much you get blocked up front when they think you're selling something. And that's their job. That's just the job of a... Uh, a good gatekeeper. Think about this. You know those calls you get that go, would you like to be on the first page of Google? Click one. Now. Like if you could stop those calls from coming through, that'd be great. You have to get on the first page of Google. It's very important for you as a business owner, but that's not, you're not going that route, right? Remember that in business, when it's somebody else's idea, it makes so much more sense. People aren't wrong. Their own self is not wrong. They can be wrong in hindsight, but you can't be wrong because it was your decision. If you're making a decision like, I should eat spaghetti, and you know that that is the wrong decision because you're deathly allergic to tomatoes, you're going to be like, yeah, that's not the right decision. I'm not going to do it. But if you eat spaghetti, it's because you thought it was right. You thought it was right. Same thing with this. It has to be their decision because when they do it, it's right. If you can get through the gatekeeper, then you get in. And a lot of times in uh, buildings, there is a property manager. In a large commercial building, there is a property manager. Now, there is either an on-site property manager or there's an off-site one. But either way, there's a property manager. There's somebody whose job is to manage the property. And you're going, oh, okay, why would that be? Well, think about this. If you have 100 offices right? You have hallways and elevators and and plumbing in the entire building. You have sidewalks and landscaping and parking lots. There has to be somebody to delegate that. They need lawn care people. They need the elevator person to do the inspections. They need the fire alarms tested. They need bulbs replaced. They need a janitorial for common areas. They need to replace the carpet in the front hall lobby. There has to be somebody to take care of all that. And exterior maintenance happens to be one of them. Now, you might have a facility manager who is just like a property manager, but facility means property pretty much. And that usually a facility manager, somebody that's in that building on site. But a lot of times you'll get an outside property manager and that's who you're trying to get a hold of. That's the money maker. That is the golden goose is a property manager. They have at least one building because you're there, but I don't know of any property manager. I'm thinking back. 
that I've ever dealt with that had one property. And if it was only one property, that'd be a giant property. But they usually have multiple properties. And when you get into a property manager on an outside company, they probably are in an office filled with property managers. So there's nothing better than getting your hands on a property manager, giving them a big hug of awesomeness, and they want to use you. And then when in a meeting, somebody says, oh, we got to switch a window cleaner over here, they could go, oh, I got a great one. Getting in a property manager will bring you tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars a year with the right ones. They just will. Property managers are gold. Gold. The other thing about a property manager is if you keep them happy, you'll have that property for like ever. They don't want to change. They got a thousand other things. They're still figuring out who's changing light bulbs and doing dumb things like elevators and whatever, right? A property manager just wants one less thing on their head. Uh, one less hat on their head, one less uh, problem in their head. They just, just take care of it. Just make sure it happens. I don't want to have to think about it. So how do you keep a property manager happy? You just do the work. You do it right and you make sure that they don't have to call you. If you're doing proper work and, and you're doing it well, they don't have to call you to go, hey, uh, Jersey, just so you know, uh, we got to reports you missed some windows, right? They don't want that. So how you sell a property manager is with that. Letting them know, hey, we take care of everything. I'm telling you, I had the best property manager I ever had was my first property manager that I got. And it was because I knew a lady who was in the office of uh, this building. They were looking for a window cleaner and they just happened to be talking, you know, in passing. And she goes, oh my gosh, my neighbor is a window cleaner. And they connected us. Now, uh, this isn't going to happen to everything. But I went there and I said, hey, uh, I just want to be open with you. I love this project. I will do everything in my in my power to make sure that this is amazing for you forever. But I've never done a building like this. So let me give you a bid. I'll get those numbers over to you and we'll go from there. He goes, oh, no, not a problem, not a problem. I give him the bid. I count everything up. It's two days. I'm putting this big thing together. I give it to him. And he looks at it and he goes, ooh. I said, well, if we got to, you know, work on that, I think we have some numbers, you know, he goes, so this price, he goes, double it and it's yours. And I said, I don't know that I can cut it in half, you know, he's no, no, double it. Charge me twice as much as this. Change it. Give me a higher bid. You're way off. Blah, blah, blah. That was my first property manager I ever had. He helped me. He helped me. And you know what I did? I had that account from the second year in business all the way through I sold my company I had that guy and I did everything I could possibly do for him and you want to know something he called me first we opened up a janitorial side of things uh, also and it wasn't a big just side we didn't necessarily push that we didn't do residential it was only commercial because we had so many property managers we ended up having dedicated janitorial staff that could do office cleaning basically and uh, I brought it up to him that we were planning on doing this. And he's like, yeah, that is awesome. He's like, I couldn't give you whatever. I got multiple buildings. That's how we started in. I did lot clearing for him, which was um, the uh, spring and fall, I think. Uh, he wanted his, we did curbs. So in a parking lot, there's curbs. There's wood chips and cigarette butts and wrappers and whatever else get caught on the curb. And his... Um, uh, company that he hired to do landscaping did nothing in the parking lot. And instead of hiring them to do the parking lot, which was this big giant undertaking, he saw, asked me if I could do that. So what I did was uh, maybe once in the spring, and once in the fall, I believe, we bought a rotary uh, like sweeper, right? We had one for our shop because we had an indoor thing. And I would just bring that there. Like one Saturday, super nice spring day, I would just like go and do the lots. I'd walk around the whole thing, sweep it all up and got paid for that. We did a ton of stuff from pressure washing. We did concrete. We did. So when you have a property manager and you can take that off their plate, you're their guy. The same reason I always tell you, I want to be your guy for window cleaning supplies, right? Put your orders in through me. Let's do this. I, I want to be so easy that when you need window cleaning supplies, you just shoot me a text because I'm saved as Jersey. I'm probably the only jersey you've ever known, right? But you just shoot me a text, jersey, it's in my cart, put it through. Jersey, here's a question. Hey, I got this bid, can I do this? I'm your guy, I wanna do everything for you. I wanna help you with bids, I wanna put in window cleaning supplies for you, I wanna get you set up with magazine subscriptions. 
I want to do all that. I want to be your guy. That's the same thing in property maintenance. They need a guy. The more things you can do for them, the more they rely on you, which makes you harder to let go if things go on. But it also brings you way more work. They already trust you. I know this guy's prices. We literally have done emergency services also, which emergency services are another whole thing. Somebody getting egged or graffitied or unfortunately somebody getting in the building during 4th of July parade time and defecating in a hallway. And that was on the janitorial side. Um, But basically call and go, dude, I have this problem. It has to get taken care of. Just do it and charge me what you think's right. Like there's so many times, which by the way, if you ever go on a holiday and clean up what I had to clean up, because I couldn't send a guy, I couldn't send uh, one of my janitorial people there. Like it just was like, I felt awful side so to go do it, but I made a lot of money. That was a really, <laughs> that was a really expensive uh, cleanup. But anyway, he didn't care. He just wanted it to be a guy. When he got a complaint, he would just call me, dude, take care of it. Absolutely. I'm on my way. Dude, the, 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 the main road side, we just got egged like an hour ago. Get there, take care of it. Perfect. Bring their trucks, everything we can. We're working late tonight, guys. Pressure washing trucks, window cleaning, clean it all off. Guess what? We are gold. If you can do that for a property manager and take a hat off of them, they will love you for absolutely ever. They just send you work. It's who, like, who's got to do it? Who's got to do it? Who's got to do it? We ended up doing a uh, uh, pressure washing job that was the uh, awning of a um, drive through And with that, they also wanted us to do like change bulbs and um, I forget what else. It was bulbs and window cleaning because there was drive through It was like a bank inside of an office building, but we did that. And they just called and said, hey, this is what I have. This project needs this, 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 and this done. We're getting it done. What can you do? There was a part of it that they wanted painted. I didn't paint. I don't go too far outside stupid like bulb changes i was already on a lift so it didn't matter but i don't do that but i do this this and this and this cool it's all yours do it charge me if anything looks weird and you think the price is going to scare me tell me first but just get it done and then he goes to the next guy who's probably a guy just like me who does like maintenance stuff he goes hey this is what i got left i got painting i got these uh new things i gotta be installed blah 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 what do you do and then he just does it if you could have one person do all that they're going to love you forever. So remember, what you're doing is you're pressure washing, but you're upselling. Uh, I'm sorry, you're window washing, but you're upselling pressure washing. You're upselling uh, flat surface cleaner if you do that. If you do algae removal, if you do facade cleaning, if you do all that stuff, remember you're their guy or gal, right? So property managers are huge. Break through the gatekeeper to get to those property managers. Now, how do you find a property manager in a building? The hard part is finding who the property manager is, but a lot of times in the front of the building, there's a little glass, uh, we called it a placard, but I don't know what it's really called. It's like a little, there's like a bulletin board and it explains the property, explains who usually owns the property and it explains uh, like occupancy permits or whatever is on there. And then it also has the management company. You can find it on the management company. Another way to find a manager, there's a tactic to get past the gatekeeper and it's called unsolicited bid. Now, understand building, every building gets their windows cleaned, right? I mean, if somebody's actually in it, if it's abandoned, maybe not, but they get their windows cleaned. You know, they get their windows cleaned. They're going to need a price, but getting to somebody who can make the decision or decide that it's time to get a price. That's the hard part. So an unsolicited bid is you go up to a project. I like this project. I want to do this project. Boom, take pictures of sides, you make up your bid packet, which by the way, we've talked about bid packets, but they're absolutely in-depth, super color, awesome, full, shiny, blow you away bids. You do all that, you put the bid and go, I'm doing all the outside, what I can see, blah, 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 here's the pricing, here's the structure, here's what I can do, put all those services in that packet. Go to Steve at at Cost Printing uh, with uh, Window Cleaning Resource and get... uh, um, Bid packets. Bid packets are awesome. There's folders. Uh, we would shrink cut everything so that all of our services were lined up. It'd be like, you know, pressure washing. And then the next page is a little shorter. It would be this and this. So you can open it up and people were blown away. We were not a fly by night company. I didn't want to be a fly by night. I'm not handing them a napkin or calling them and going, hey, can I give you a bid? No. 
what I would do is I'd make this whole thing and I put it in a really, really nice um, uh, packet. We had uh, custom printed packets, which I don't have any of them. Wait. <sighs> okay. See how I prep for shows? Like this, a poly bag. But these are not custom uh, printed ones, but you can get custom printed poly bags. You can get custom printed folders. I would put that folder in a nice poly bag. It'd be thick, it'd be something. And I'd say facility maintenance on the front. Now, a gatekeeper's not gonna look at that. All the time, custom quality, everything in there specific, sealed up even. They're not gonna be like, I'm gonna throw this away. If you send them a postcard, they're gonna throw it away. If you send them an unsolicited bid packet, they will get it to who needs to get it. And then the property manager who didn't think about windows, all of a sudden gets this big packet of awesome goodness. They open up like, holy cow, look at these guys. Did I order this? I don't remember ordering this. And that's it. It's awesome. It's absolutely awesome to send that. But that's one way to kind of get around doing uh, property maintenance or property manager gatekeepers. Get around them. It's super, super valuable to do that. Another thing, if you can uh, do a bid packet, remember that if you're doing a condo type building or something along those lines, that balconies are going to be people's own responsibility. The more responsibility that a person has, the less that they have to pay for. So always, I will never bid um, balconies. A, it's going to take me a lot longer, so the bid's going to be scarier. But I'm always going to say, oh, we didn't put balconies on there. We can certainly do them if you want, but usually they can take care of it because they can walk right. Oh, yeah, 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 that's their responsibility. They're saving money by doing that. So don't include a uh, person's own responsibilities. That's on their own thing. But most people, even with a balcony, even if they can get to a window like around a corner, you're still going to do that because it's not easily walked up to. But do bid packets. Bid packets, unsolicited bids, so good. But on those bid packets, be as, I mean, we were spending maybe like $10 a bid packet when it was all said and done, maybe even less, eight to 10 bucks. That's for the folder and the custom pages and our business cards blew people away and everything you could possibly put into this to make somebody go, wow, this guy really took some effort in this. Like I see the prices. I don't think he's expensive because I'm looking at the prices, but this guy does things to the nine. This is a company. This isn't just some dude. So make that bid packet as amazing as you can. Bid packets will break through the noise. I'm telling you, I've seen stuff where it was three bids and my packet was always on top because it was a real packet. Like the rest of it was like a carbon copy. It just was, ah, they're cheaper, but look at what they're, what, what are you getting? You're assuming with a, a fancy bid packet, you're getting great service. You're getting a great company that cares with this like carbon copy thing. It's like a $10,000 bid and somebody put it on like a half sheet of paper they're not going to take this serious, right? So that is kind of the big, big thing. Uh, make it make it easy for somebody to want to choose you, right? Just like you should make it easy for the prop man. The, pro the property manager should rely on you for everything. And when they call, you say how high and just keep them happy. I'm telling you, it's so worth it. So worth it. The other nice thing that I love commercial, love commercial. Now, by the way, let me go ahead and put this out there. But I love, A, I love um, uh, route because route is frequency. I love residential because it's not frequency, but it busy it creates busy times, spring and fall, and you get big chunks of money to do these windows. And I love commercial because commercial gets put in the slow part. So your busiest month, say, is May. We'll say. March, April, those times are not going to be as busy as May. So you're going to take all those big properties you had that are doing it twice a year, throw them in those slow times because they just need it done twice a year. They don't care if it's the busy time or not. All of a sudden now, July, when you're just twiddling your thumbs, August, and you're like, Ugh, come on, fall. Throw those big properties in there. Now, all of a sudden, you're packing in the full times of big properties where you can spend to go send every crew member you have for a week, Right? It's guaranteed that fill those slow times. I love it for that. I love it, love it, love it for that. Um, all of our commercial is packed up. It makes for a really busy month to have all those big commercial projects, but the guys love to be on those too because I always bring them lunch on big projects because why not? They're on one project. They're not in the truck and driving back and forth and doing those commercials. They're usually water feeding. It's just a smooth, great, great process. 
So make sure to use it to fill slow times. That is my number one love of commercials for slow times. Um, and then the commercial add-ons are really nice too because remember, like we said, if you can do all these other things when you're doing, see, I have commercials that I do. They're commercial because I only do them twice a year, but then I do uh, flat surface cleaning, entryway cleaning. I do that once a month. I pop gum and do just flat surface cleaning and wash everything down. I do that once a month, but I do the whole building once a quarter, uh, once every six months, once a year maybe. So you have all these other add-ons to make that filling the slow time, again, filling that time up and taking and kind of getting the most out of it. But with gatekeepers, it always, always is a relationship. You have to build that relationship. Once you have that relationship, it's a whole nother ballpark. They will throw you everything they possibly can. Everything they can. I mean, I got particular accounts where uh, when we go and do them, it coincides with when their pool gets to be open. So we go put all the pool furniture out. Now, again, listen, I never, ever tell you to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is if you have the staff to do the things and you can charge the same amount of money, and a property manager just wants you to help be happy and get them everything they need, send a staff member to do that. It really, really makes sense. And they're going to send it to you and they're going to love you because you do so much work for them. Remember, if you do pressure washing, window cleaning, you do flat surface cleaning, you do entranceway cleaning, you do high dusting before you clean, all that stuff you do, you really become un- indispensable. They're not going to be like, oh, if I let go of, of Johnny, I lose all of those services, Right? Don't do crap work. You should get let go if you do crap. But if you don't do crap, they're going to keep you. Just keep them happy. But the biggest thing that I find that people have the biggest problem with is they expect it to be almost like route. Or they expect it to go in and go, hey, I'm Jersey with XYZ. I got a bid here for $12,000 done twice a year. Uh, When can we start? And they go, "Uh, we got to look at it. They're like, ah, it just didn't work. (laughs) I can't sell commercial, man. I try no, you didn't try. You tried once. That's like, hey, uh, I'm going to learn to fly a helicopter. Man, I sat down and grabbed the joystick and it just didn't work. It's like people who hate on Waterfed. I did this whole job and it just didn't uh, learn to do it. Learn the tool. Same thing with this. You have to learn to get in. You have to work at it. You have to keep with it. The biggest thing with commercial is you stay with it, stay on them because they have so many things to do. Now, yeah, there's probably crappy property managers, but every property manager has to do everything that's in the building. So they're always busier. Window cleaning is my thing. It's my job to keep on them. It's my job to make sure it gets done. You guys have enough things to worry about. That's what I always tell property managers. So if you can go ahead and keep with it, keep sending them emails, keep dropping them cookie platters and and uh, anything else that keeps your logo relevant and you're, you're, you're in, the, in their brain, do that. Because eventually when they give it to you, it's so worth it. Not only are you getting one big job, you're getting a bunch of good jobs. So make sure to stay with it if you're doing commercial. By the way, if you haven't already, go ahead and comment if you're watching on YouTube. If you are listening via podcast, what's up? Most people listen, so that's cool. Uh, Leave a review if you want. I got a 4.8 review on uh, Apple. Apple, no, iTunes. What is it? iTunes? Yeah. 4.8. Kind of sad. I was hoping I'd have a 5.0. But if you want, go ahead and leave a review. But even more importantly, go and uh, get a subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine. It's uh, absolutely the best window cleaning magazine ever invented, says my mom. So go check that out, awcmag.com, of course. And uh, shameless plug number two, buy your supplies through me. That's literally how I make my money, is by putting in orders for people and helping people and helping them with bids and getting pictures and all the other stuff that you need help with. Have a guy. I want to be your guy. Huh? Huh? My name is Jersey. Save it in your phone. It's 862-312-2026. Make my day. Tell me what kind of uh, awesome things I can buy with uh, the cheddar I earn. People always are like, hey, you can buy some, you know, name brand crayons or (laughs) you get name brand bandages. Um, Yeah, let me know what I can buy. But let me put your order in. It doesn't cost you any extra, of course. And it is the most awesome thing you could possibly do for a guy like me. 
So go out there and do that. Go get some commercial. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.